there are two ways you can upload this file into this directory so i'm going to use scp command would use ssh in the background it should look something like scp source source is asdf.zip admin at dollar ip colon this directory give the password and send it okay if you learned something new make sure you subscribe Hey amazing hackers, I'm Tor Hat from HM Cyber Academy. Today we'll be looking at 2 million box from Hack the Box. It is a Linux easy machine. This 2 million box is released because there are 2 million subscribers in Hack the Box at that time. Okay, it's going to be really interesting. So get excited. First of all, spawn this machine and also connect to the VPN, copy the IP addresses and update the sudo nano initial RC. So this is the IP address and my ip address is if config turn zero okay it's the same ip address so and as you can see this domain is already 2 million dot htb but as of now i'm just gonna keep some random characters to just to show you that we need to update the domain as well okay and use the command z shell so this would pop up a new shell and as you can see my ip and target ip has been updated okay so the next step is usually nmap nmap dollar ip and service version scan and default scripts scan all ports and only run the scripts on open ports if the ping scan doesn't work use no ping scan and verbosity to speed up the pen testing and dash dash min rate will send 2000 requests per second okay so let's send it as you can see port 22 and port 80 are open right so port 22 is ssh as we already know we need credentials to access this but port 80 we know that it might be http okay so to check that control c <coughs> and control v and as you can see this automatically turned into 2 million dot htb okay so you can save this domain in etsy host file okay so how do you do that you go to the standard processes and check this first because you need to change the domain so you change the domain sudo nano z shell rc scroll down change this domain to 2 million dot htb save it and z shell for new z shell and the next step is this one okay printf is a shell script command so it automatically detects that it's a command and backslash n will give a new line and percentage s will take the first variable and the, it gives a tab character and the next percentage s will take the next variable and the output from here is sent to input for the t command okay so dash a is append so make sure you keep dash a if you do not keep it this etsy host file will be completely overwritten by this one okay so if you hit enter the file is updated and you can also see that from slash etc slash host so the file is updated as you can see this is the new entry okay looks like the nmap scan is complete so let's see what it is copy it and paste it over here and also paste the target ip and my ip as well 10 10 14 90 and as you can see this is port 22 which is ssh and if you scroll down port 80 and it is http and it's running nginx okay cool and it did not follow redirect to 2 million dot htb we have already updated this one and it supports get head post and options mm, okay cool so this is the linux machine so if you see any place where you can inject command injection then use linux type of commands okay so let's save it let's go back and we can see that it opens a website okay so just hover over these things and at the bottom left you can see all the links that are associated with each one okay so i'm just hovering over this about section and faqs and all of them are hashtags okay so hashtags are nothing but they are part of the same page okay so i don't have to move from this page okay so hashtags labs all of fame and login okay so this is not a hashtag so i'm opening it in a new tab okay so i just scroll down i see a youtube video and i see faqs but i don't okay look at here so how do i join hack the box and it gives a link over here 
okay so i'm opening this link in a new tab okay so this join hdb is also a link to the same one okay so i already opened this and looks like it needs an invite code to sign up so this login page let's try to use some asdf at asdf.com and some random characters and see how it responds it says user not found hmm interesting so let's give something like admin at hackthebox.com because the domain is htb right uh, or you can say 2 million dot htb okay so let's skip asdf and see what happens okay it replies with the same response okay so it's checking both username and password and only then it's finally replying back to us or else you can think of something that requires a valid username and password which we don't currently have okay so this is a forgot password thing so i'm clicking this and we still don't get anything from this okay so it's just basically some hashtag okay all we need to do is we need to go here and get an invite code okay so if you don't know what this is when the hack the box first started we cannot directly join with our email or password or something like that okay so we need to hack our way through the hack the box okay so to get an invite code we need to hack this invite code page and then get the invite code and then sign up and then only then you can access this hack the box platform okay so it was a cool experience when we first do it but nowadays you can just have any email and you can just log in this brings up lots of memories but anyway the way to hack this is you need to go to inspect element and go to network tab and just zooming and just reload this page and as you can see there are htb frontend min.js and invite api min.js hmm interesting so it's something that's related to invite code right so this is the only one that seems to be important okay so let's open this in a new tab and as you can see it seems to be like some obfuscated javascript code okay to understand this code you can just copy this and open js beautify okay so it just gives us this beautifier.io so this is the website and in this beautifier so we can just give the complete code which we got from hack the box and if you scroll down you see detect packers and obfuscators we need to check this one if you do not check this one <coughs> this is going to just reply something like this okay so it did not detect any obfuscators so we want it to detect the obfuscators and only then give us the output okay so click on this detect packers and obfuscators just paste this and click on beautify code okay so look how much the code has changed if the dfscator is used okay so now we have two functions which is verify invite code and make invite code hmm interesting so you can also see that from here right so make invite code and verify invite code okay so make invite code does not have any arguments in the code but verify invite code has the code itself okay so how to check this make invite code so you can just copy this and go back to the invite page and go to the console and we know that all of this javascript is loaded into this page right which means all the functions which are these functions will be loaded into this page okay so which means we can try to execute those functions or call those variables or whichever you want you can actually do this okay so you can type make invite code as you can see it just completed the whole make invite code i can just access this okay it gave make invite code function it gave some object some constructor and everything you need to execute this as this function can you clear this okay there's a clear function okay so everything has to be a function so you can say make invite code and say it as a function okay so now you will get some different kind of response okay so now you get an object which returns 200 okay response and if you just expand this you get the data and the data is this one okay so as you can see it is encrypted this enc type is encryption type is rot 13 okay so you can just copy this and use cyberchef and paste it over here and say rot 13 okay it says in order to generate invite code make a post request to this one okay 
so this is one way to do it if you want to do it in terminal all you have to do is you can copy this echo this and say tr a to z and capital a to capital z and detect these ones and change them to 13 characters to the forward or backward because 13 is in the middle of the alphabet right you can say n to z and a to m and capital n to capital z capital a to capital m so if you do this this will probably change this to this okay you can also do this in one more way okay you can go to javascript which is deobfuscated and as you can see this is the url right so you can use this url to make a post request which is here and then you fetch the response okay so let's see how we can do that so let's say curl dash capital x and post and http colon slash slash dollar domain slash api slash v1 slash okay so this is the one right so api v1 invite how to generate and let's see the results okay so we got the results right so if you have jquery installed you can keep that in jquery format okay so let's see what happens okay we got we got the response in json format if you want only this part you can say jquery dot data dot data and then it will just give us this part okay you can say jquery space dot data dot data and look at this okay so this is inside the data and inside the data we have another data right so that's what this means so this still have the quotations right so we want to remove the quotations by saying dash r which is raw format of this string okay which which removes this double quotations and everything okay so now you have removed this so now what you can do is you can send this to the tr command okay so the tr command we have already used so you can say a to z and a to z n to z and a to m so this will give a rot 13 form of this one okay all right so now you have understood how to do this now it says in order to generate an invite code make a post request to this okay so we'll use the same thing and remove everything and hit enter so now we got a similar response and it gives the data and code and inside this there is some string and this is some formatted or encoded value so let's do the same thing and send it to jquery now it's much more clear okay so you do the same thing again now you select a data and inside the data we have code right and let's see what happens let's see data and, and code and you see this in the form of string so change that into raw format and you get this and now you send it to base 64 because you can see capital letters and small letters and numbers and also equals to sign okay so if you go to cyberchef and remove this and if you check for base 64 you can see capitals and small letters and 0 to 9 plus forward slash equals to okay so if you see these kind of characters it's most probably base 64 you can directly paste it here and get this or you can send it to base 64 and get the invite code okay so you see a different invite code from here because every time you make a request it's generating a new code okay so if you do that again you get a new code okay so we'll use this code to verify if this code is correct okay so how to verify you can see this and you can see verify invite code and then inside the code you need to give the code okay so let's do that clear everything in the form of function let's say verify invite code and in this code let's give this and let's see what happens so it says syntax error looks like it is expecting a string okay so we need to give in the form of a string so remove this and say this and let's see what happens okay so as you can see the invite code is valid okay so which means i can use this code to actually sign up to this hack the box page okay let's close this and let's use this invite code and sign up so now it lets me to this registration page and let's use the username torhat and email as support at hnmcyberacademy.com and the password let's use some super secret password so this is exactly my password for support at hnmcyberacademy.com so don't use this and let's click on register okay so now let's open this so it's probably astf astf1 and let's log in okay now we have successfully logged in let's explore the website okay it's in the same page 
so okay this is a logout page so we don't need to do that right now so all of them are hashtags right so just ignore them and just hover over these things okay this is the same page so this is same page slash rules okay we don't get anything from here right no links nothing okay this is change log okay this is a hashtag hashtag and hashtag okay so nothing so nothing 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 hashtags 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 so this is some new page and anything else okay this is hashtag 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 so challenges hashtag 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 so basically there's nothing else other than this access page okay so this is not a link okay this is not a link okay so this seems to be a link and this seems to be a link okay so as you can see at the bottom left you see api slash v1 slash username slash vpn regenerate and generate okay so let's click one of them and investigate further in burp suit okay so i click that and it downloaded this vpn file so let's go to http history and let's see this let's send this request to repeater and here we do all our testing okay to test apis first let's see what apis we get okay so you need to just remove everything and see what we get okay so we get a 200 okay response and we get api v1 and version 1 of the api okay so now we need to go to v1 okay so forward slash v1 and now send it okay so we got a response for user and also admin okay so we know all the things about the user right we don't have to go and do that again we have seen how to generate we have generated we have verified we have checked the authentication okay we did not check the authentication but it would be user only okay all of this are basically the access that we already have okay so let's check if we have admin access or not okay so it says api v1 admin auth so let's send it to new tab and say api v1 admin auth okay so you also need to check that it is a get request okay so it is a get request only so let's send it so as you can see the message is false which means the user with this php session id which is star hat is not an admin okay so let's change this name to authorization and let's see the next one and next we have a post request of admin vpn generate okay so let's send this again to a new tab and say generate here it is a post request forward slash admin vpn generate now send it okay so as you can see we got a 401 unauthorized since we are not admin we cannot authorize this okay so that makes sense right so let's see the next one it is a put request put request actually updates the user settings okay so let's use this it is admin settings and update right so let's send it to a new tab again and say update settings and this is a put request and it says slash admin slash settings slash update so let's send it okay it gives a 200 okay response but it says danger invalid content type okay so somewhere here let's input some content type okay so let's say content type is application slash json okay so we are inputting some json format into the server okay currently we are not inputting anything so we are not giving any data so let's see how it responds and then we'll decide what kind of data we need to input okay so let's send it it says danger missing parameter email hmm interesting so now in the json format we input email okay so how do we do that you give this flower brackets and say email and in this email let's give support at hm cyber academy dot com okay so let's send it and see what happens so it gave a 200 okay response but this time missing parameter is admin hmm interesting so let's give a comma is admin equals to true okay because we have a false condition over here right so the opposite should be true so let's try this if it doesn't work we'll 
will go with other method okay so let's send it it gave a 200 okay response again but this time it says variable is admin needs to be either zero or one zero means not an admin one means admin okay so it's obvious right so we change this to one okay so let's send it so it detected my user id which is star hat and is admin equals to one so now it seems like i am an admin user right so let's go to the authorization section let's send this to see if this false is changed to true okay so let's send it and as you can see it is changed to true which means i am an admin so now i can use this post request and hopefully it does not reply with 401 unauthorized okay so let's send it okay now it gives a 200 okay response because i am an admin user and the message is invalid content type we have already said that content type as application json so let's copy this and input somewhere around here and send it so now it is asking for missing parameter username so let's give a username parameter in json format okay so let's say username let's give the username tor hat so let's send it so now it gave a 200 okay response but it gave a lot of content as well okay so looks like it just pasted this whole file kind of like a cat command so if we suspect that this is a cat command which means this is part of a command so what you can do is something like echo something and send it to file.txt so this file.txt gave us this output right so what if we change this and say ls so we end this cat command with semicolon and we give our own command okay it gave us file.txt as well okay so which means we can try semicolon and try to give our own command and see what happens so something happened which means something actually is the problem okay so what if this cat command does not only have file.txt but it might also have something else at the end okay so let me copy this and explain it over here so this is your input this is exactly what you gave but what if after this command there is some other command waiting for execution okay so in order to eliminate this one you need to give a hashtag okay so now this would be your payload okay so tor hat is already given so you give the semicolon and say who am i and at the end you give the hashtag okay so hashtag will comment out everything else let's send it and as you can see we got an output of www hyphen data which means our command is being executed right so we'll use this area to execute a command and get a reversal okay so how do we do that we can say netcat nlvp8888 and go to pen test monkey reversal cheat sheet and if you scroll down you see all of these things right since we are dealing with the linux machine it is possible that we get a bash shell let's go back to burp suite and say which bash and it gives user bin bash okay you can replace this with this and also say slash user slash bin slash bash you change this ip address to 10 10 14 90 and the port to 8888 okay so let's send it and see if this actually executes so we did not get any output let's see we did not get any connection back so let's try to encode this and let's send it still nothing right so if you do not get any response back let's try another command let's remove this let's go back let's see if netcat is installed in the target machine okay so you can say which netcat okay netcat also exists so you remove this paste this and at the end execute this and change this ip address to 10 10 14 90 port to 8888 so let's send it so looks like we still got nothing so nothing to worry let's go back and change this and let's use another command so hopefully this command might work let's remove everything and change this ip address to 10 10 14 90 port is 8888 so let's send it and let's see so looks like it is hanging over here right which means we should be having a reverse shell right here so look at this we got a reverse shell okay so who am i looks like this is an unstable shell so let's connect again so cancel send it again
okay so now we have successfully implemented a stable shell okay we can clear the screen we can say control c and we don't lose the shell so looks like we are at the root of the www data let's see what we have okay we don't have anything other than www data let's see what is in slash home okay we have admin user so let's say ls slash home slash admin there is user.txt so let's say cat slash home slash admin slash user.txt okay permission denied so first you need to change from www data to admin and only then you can access this user flag so all we have access is this directory so let's type ls dash la and i can see some files index.php and some controllers some fonts and everything so there is some router.php database.php so this index.php defines bunch of routes for various pages and endpoints throughout the website we don't need to touch this one so let's check the database.php let's say cat this okay do we see any username or password nothing so we don't get any username and password from this so there is environment variables so this file is commonly used in php web frameworks to set an environment variables to be used by this application so let's check if we have any data in here so this is kind of a faking one but but still the structure looks the same okay this is the database and this is the admins username and password so let's save it admins username and password or this okay so now we have username and password and we also know that we have an ssh connection so let's exit out of here ssh admin at the rate dollar ip and let's give this password as well okay so we were able to log in let's say i don't want to paste the password there so if i want to show the password so i want to say ssh pass which is not currently installed so let's install it so now say ssh pass and dash p you give the password and then ssh admin at dollar ip or dollar domain okay you can use anything because both of them actually point to same ip address right let's send it and as you can see you were able to log in okay if you type ls you can see user.txt let's say cat user.txt and you get the user flag so now let's see what this admin has access to okay so let's say find from where you want to find you want to find the whole server and what do you want to find i want to find the user permissions which are admin and send all the errors which i don't want to slash dev slash null okay we are getting so many files so we don't want something in sys and we don't want something in proc i guess i saw proc okay so we don't want anything in here so we can say find slash user admin and grep the output and give an inverse grep and execute this and also proc so you don't want sys to be shown in the output and you don't want proc to be shown in the output okay so let's send it so now we have a limited amount of things so we can also remove this run so let's do that let's let's remove run so now we have home admin cache and ssh okay so we already know what we have here so the only ones left are this file and this file okay so this is basically the terminal which we are using so let's not care about that but this one is interesting let's see what it has so user can read write this which is admin so let's see what is inside this file so it seems like a mail patch system os so they want to patch system os hey admin i know you're working as fast as you can to do db migration while we're partially down can you also upgrade the os on our web host there have been few serious linux kernel cves already this year that one in overlay fs slash fuse looks nasty we can't get popped by that so there is something that's related to overlay fs let's use this and say overlay fs exploit so we get this cve right so we can copy the cve and try to search something that's related to this cve so you can check something from ubuntu that's also good okay we have ubuntu we also have this link datadog and since it is related to linux kernel so let's check couple of things here 
okay so you name dash a will tell about linux kernel versions and everything and when it is last updated so it is september 2022 okay september 23 2022 so this is the os version if you see ubuntu you can see that it was published in 2023 okay and as you can see this is the commit that is fixed okay so if you check this this is actually it is january 24 2023 okay which is not below september 23 2022 right the fix has been made in 2023 but the os is in 2022 this still is vulnerable okay so you can also check cat etc slash lsp iphone release so this would give you the distribution code name which is jammy so you can check here the jammy is right here okay so this is the release version which is you can say patched you can also check the fix right here so this is when it is fixed this is when it was published and this is when the proof of concept was shown to us so let's open this patch and you can see this github link which is the actual linux kernel so if you scroll down you can see the date as january 27 so this is when patch was made okay so you can use this exploit whichever is listed over here and you can actually use that exploit right here to upload the exploit into this let's create a temp directory mk temp slash t so this is a temp directory let's say chmod 777 and a cd to this okay so now it has full permissions and any file can enter into this so let's open a new tab and download this exploit okay so to download the exploit it is in proof of concept section okay so let's scroll down and this is how the vulnerability actually works as you can see if you use this command this admin user would actually have root user permissions but is it that easy i'm not sure but if you type id as you can see this user has root id permissions but he's not part of root so that makes no sense right this root user is part of no group which means he cannot execute anything that's related to root for example if you want to use slash root slash root dot txt it would not work because the permissions are either no group permissions or admin permission so let's exit out of here and let's download this exploit and as you can see this is the proof of concept it is a github link and this github link is not in our language so what we do is we copy this and go to translate and go to google translate and click on websites and give the website over here and submit as you can see now everything is converted into english language right so first of all you compile with this and use it by starting two terminals in first terminal use this and second terminal use this so let's download this so download the zip so it is downloaded so let's open copy it go to machines 2 million paste it over here let's rename it to a simpler asdf there are two ways you can upload this file into this directory one way that we usually do is you type python3 and http server and use wget command to access this ip address 10.10.14.90 and colon 8000 followed by asdf dot zip so this is what we usually do right but i'm going to remove this and do it in a new way okay so i'm going to use scp command so this scp command would use ssh in the background and it uses a similar options like identity file or mention the port and basically it should look something like scp source and a destination so how do you do it you say scp what is the source source is asdf.zip and what is the destination destination is admin at dollar domain or you can say dollar ip in this server you need to say colon this directory copy paste it over here and give a directory symbol if you hit enter it would obviously ask for this password here give the password and send it and now the file astf.zip has been uploaded over here okay if you learned something new make sure you subscribe
so let's unzip it we have a new directory let's use cd to go to the directory and if you type ls you see all of these things over here so all of them are c files okay you cannot execute them but there is a make file that would convert all these files into executables to use that you have to say make all okay so this make all will use gcc in the background which is a compiler for c programming that would convert these c files into executables so hit enter here you see some warnings so you can actually ignore the warnings you have to only care if there are errors okay so you can simply ignore all these warnings okay so if you type ls you can see all of them are now executables what is the next step so next step is you need to have two terminals and in first terminal use this and second terminal use this okay so let's get that two terminals first so we already have one terminal over here and let's use second terminal ssh admin at ip and the password is this one okay so now let's change to this directory let's go back this is the first command in first terminal right so try to understand first this gc will execute and the output will be going into this lower program which is in ovl cap directory which is here and the output of this is input of this fuse okay so let's run it it's waiting and in the second terminal use this which is actually this one okay so let's send it look what we got we are a root user right now if you type id now you got username as root group as root and groups as root and admin as well okay let's get the root flag cat slash root slash root dot txt so now you got the root flag so submit your user flag and root flag right here and that's how you solve this machine i hope you enjoy this one and i'll see you guys in the next one peace